Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is May, and as you can see in the title of my video, um, mga dapat tandaan ng mga immigrants or Filipinos in my case before you come here in the US. So, um, if you want to know what are the stuff, what are the things that you need to know before coming here or migrating here in the US, please keep on watching. <music> said earlier this video is about um, the immigrants or Filipinos in my case because I am a Filipino um, what are the things that you have to remember before coming here in the US and if you are an immigrant these are the things that you need to remember the number one that you need to remember is you need to speak English now guys, it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need you don't have to be fluent. I am not fluent in English, but you just really have to speak, write and understand English. It is a must. I think I think if you are a foreigner and you want to go or migrate to a particular country, it is really a must to speak or learn or understand their language. So, the same thing here in the US. And I am a Filipino and we are lucky enough that English is taught in the Philippines ever since, you know, you're, you're a baby. Some parents talk to their babies in English. One of the traits of Filipinos, they are good in, in speaking English. Um, some are not fluent or some can't speak English. But rest assured that they understand you when you speak to them in English. Now, guys, you don't really have to be a fluent in English. Overwhelming guys when you got here. Now, um, just a little background. I graduated college in the Philippines, computer science. I took English subjects in the Philippines. Um, what do you call this? I also taught English, but you know, so I thought I was good at English. I thought, um, I, I thought, I really thought I was good at English, but it just burst my bubble, you know? When I got here, it is just very overwhelming to talk in English, guys. Especially kapag native speakers ang mga kausap mo. Um, when I am talking to a fellow Filipino, hindi siya masyadong intimidating because you know, yung accent niya naintindihan mo, yung um, pronunciation niya naintindihan mo. But when you get here in the United States, sa example ko na lang, Yung asawa ko, he has a southern accent. There are pronunciation na hindi ko maintindihan. And sometimes it left, it leaves me hanging. Na parang, huh? What? <laughs> and then parang feeling ko, as in guys, super dumudugo ang ilong ko. And, but don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask them. Don't be afraid to tell them to slow down. Don't be afraid to tell him that you did not understand. Because, so far, guys, yung mga nakakasama kong Americans dito, they are very understanding, they are very... Hindi sila, hindi sila grammar Nazi like Filipinos. Filipinos, they are a grammar Nazi. They, they think that they know everything. They think that um, you have to be in a particular accent just to be, for you to be a good, good speaker, an English speaker. When... In reality, guys, here in the United States, there are 50 states and 50 different accents. Accents don't matter here. You know, as long as they understand, as long as they, you know, they don't care kung ano yung present tense, future tense. They don't care kung tama ba yung pronoun mo. They don't really care. They just, what they care is they understand you. And, and so far, yung mga nakakasalubong ko, mga nakakasalamuha ko, my boss, he is very, pag, you know, medyo ang bilis-bilis yun na magsalita, no? Tapos magsasalita. Talaga sinasabi ko, I'm sorry, sir. I, you know, you have to slow down. I can't understand. <laughs> and they're very kind enough. And they tell me, okay, they slow down. First, you need to have also yung initiative for us to learn in English. Yung initiative natin to learn their language. Because, you know, as me... Me personally, I think, yung nga sinabi ko, I think I'm good at English. Pero alam nyo, sinabi ko sa asawa ko, I think, you know what, Doug? I think I need to to study English as a second language. And he was like, what? Why? 
you, you know, I can understand you, you know, you know, parang, eh, parang I speak good in English, ganyan, ganyan. Tapos sabi ko, it's not enough. I'm not even confident to answer the telephone, to speak to, uh, it's, it's really different, guys. You really have to come here and experience that. Minsan, ang simple he and she, napapagpalitan mo pa. And it is not me. Marami akong friends, we have the same problem. He, she, you know, he and she is being taught in the Philippines since you were in kindergarten. And yet, nagkaka-problema ako sa he and she. You know that he is for guy, she is for girl. But you know, when you speak diretso English, it's, it's parang nawiwindam ako. So, yun guys. So, first, if you are an immigrant, especially to all the Filipinos there, I know this will not be a big problem, but still keep on learning English. Kasi may mga terms sila, may mga terminologies sila, may mga um, iba-iba silang, what do you call this, slang terms na hindi natin naiintindihan na we can't read in the book. You know, it's, 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 it's just yung, yung everyday conversation ninyo, dun palang nahahasa na, nalalaman may mga slang terms nila. So, yun. That's the number one na dapat yung malaman, guys, for all the foreigners and all the immigrants or Filipinos who want to come here, is English. S speak. You don't have to be good, guys. Just speak, understand, and learn English. Okay? Number two. Number two, guys, is um, you need to, to, to learn how to drive. Now, I am a Filipino, and you know, guys, when you go to our country, we have different kinds of um public transportation there are jeepneys there are tricycles to, um pedicab tulak we have buses we have trains everything name it we have it filipinos have an option if you want to learn how to drive you can go to a driving school pero kung ayaw mo magmaneho okay lang then you can still get to go everywhere because there are lots of transportations na meron sa pilipinas but then I got here. So, we didn't have a car in the Philippines. When I got here, guys, nawindang ako kasi we live in a country area. If you are if you know my area, malayo kami sa Kabihasnan. And pilay ka talaga, guys, if you don't know how to drive or you don't have a car. Sobrang pilay ka. When I got here, hirap na hirap ako. Malungkot. Tapos um I started working um, six months pa lang ako rito sa America, nagtrabaho na ako. And then, I started learning couponing. Tapos, dahil nag-coupon ako, nagpo-post ako ng mga paninda ko online. So, meron akong mga, mga kliyente na inimit ko somewhere, you know, para mag-exchange kami. He will pay me, they will pay me, and I'll give them the, their items. Tapos, um, I started to study also. Nag-aral nag din ako rito. So, I was, it was really very, hard for me not to drive kasi I'm studying I'm I'm, I'm working tapos I need to meet people sa paninda ko parang lagi ko lang nahihiya ako sa asawa ko na palagi ko siyang palagi ko siyang iniistorbo i e, ano mo naman ako makikipagkita ako so time ko naka depende sa asawa ko Kung ano yung tipo ng trabaho ko. Yung trabahong kinuha ko, the first time I, I worked at um, Ross, it's just like 8 minutes from here. I took it because I didn't have a choice. Kasi I didn't know how to drive. So it's very close. Pwede akong ihatid sundo ng asawa ko. Hindi ako makapamili if I want to work in a big city like Charlotte. Hindi pwede. Because I don't know how to drive. Kailangan naka, naka depende sa asawa ko yung, pagmamane, yung, yung trabaho ko kunin ko. So ganun katindi, Ganun katindi yung pangangailangan dito na marunong kang magmaneho, guys. Um, so ako, when I, I, I remember, six months pa lang ako dito, I started to learn how to drive. Um, matapang ako, guys. As in, sobrang matapang ako. Hindi ako natatakot matutong magmaneho. There was a time na tinatakas ko yung sasakyan namin. Hindi alam ng asawa ko to. There was a time na tinatakas ko yung sasakyan namin just for me to learn to learn how to drive. And there was even a time na muntik na akong magbangga sa poste, muntik na akong masagasaan. Well, thank goodness, hindi siya, it didn't happen. Kasi, hindi alam na asawa ko na tinatakas ko. So, matapang talaga akong, gustong gusto ko talagang matutong mag-drive, guys. Kasi sobrang hirap na nakaasa ka sa asawa mo. Tapos, ang lungkot-lungkot pa, kasi mara yung area ko rito, it's, it's very quiet. 
So, yun. So, sabi ko sa asawa ko, I really need to learn how to drive. You know how to drive na it was worth it, guys. Kapag na nabuboring ako, pupunta ako sa ganito. I'm just saying na, I can go everywhere now. Everywhere, anywhere. Kung magkukupon ako, I can go, eh, I can, bzzz, labas. Kung nagugutom ako, I want a Filipino food. I can drive all the way to 40 minutes drive. Kakain lang ako ng Filipino food. Very, very important, guys. You know, how to drive a vehicle. So, kayo dyan, ng mga naghihintay ng immigration papers or yung mga K-1 visas, habang nandiyan dyan kayo sa Pilipinas, guys, mag-study na kayo ng, ano, ng driving lessons. We learn how to drive. Very important and very, very important talaga siya, guys. Okay? So, number three na tayo. Number three is your credit score. So... Me as an immigrant, I came here, I didn't really know about credit score, guys. Ano ba yun? Diba? Ano ba yung credit score? Bakit kailangan mo ng credit score? Ano ba impact nun sa credit score? So, me personally, parang, I really didn't have any idea. Ang nag, ang kainaman lang kasi is yung asawa ko, uh, magaling siya sa credit score, sa pag-aalaga ng credit. So, what he did is, he, he told me just one night na, you need to build up your credit score. Because as, as foreigners and as immigrants, zero yung credit score dito natin. So, you, this is the importance of credit score, guys. I will give you a um, personal experience, a hindsight. My friend told me that her husband was um, trying to get a house for them, you know, for family. And her husband is walang utang, malinis ang record, walang utang, maraming pera, kaya walang utang. And guess what, guys? He got this approved. Why? Because wala siyang utang. He doesn't have a credit history. So, ganun ka-importante, guys, ang credit score dito sa Amerika. And tayo, as a Filipino, as an immigrant coming here to the, to the United States, our credit score or credit report is zero. Hindi tayo makakakuha ng sasakyan, hindi tayo makakakuha ng bahay, hindi rin tayo makaka... Maka kahit ano, wala. So, ang, what my husband did is we build up my credit score. So, what we did, what I did was, um, I applied for Capital One na credit card. Meron silang credit card dun just to, you know, you don't have to have a credit history. Magpe-pay ka lang and I think we paid $200 for that. Tapos, you can have your credit score. I mean, your credit card. So, what I did was I used my credit card. And then, kapag due date na, pinipay off ko siya. Pinipay off ko siya. Para lang, maano, ma, mag, mag, para lang may, magkaroon ako ng magandang history. Sometimes, kayo, bilang may asawa tayo, pwede kayong gawing supplement, supplementary user ng asawa ninyo. Um, yeah, you can be a supplemental, supplementary, ben, supplementary of the credit card of your husband. Then after that, guys, if you build up your credit score, makakatanggap na lang kayo ng mga... Um, credit card offers sa bahay ninyo. Now, my credit score is, I think, the last time I checked is like 750, which is good. And it's all because of my credit cards. So, yun guys, yung mga credit score natin, super importante siya. Ang maganda kasi dito guys, if you have a good credit score, you can, you can eat whatever the rich people eat. You can drive whatever the rich people drive. You can have the most expensive laptop. Ang bala mo lang is yung credit score mo. Bakit? Kasi utang naman yun. Everything in the US are utang. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Utang talaga siya, guys. But you know, babayaran mo yan. What I'm saying is, if you have a good credit score, ang pinakamahal na laptop, which is I think MacBook Pro, I can get that if I want to. Yun nga lang, pagdating ng bayaran, kayod marino tayo. Kayod, kayod, bayad, bayad. Kaya dito, sinasabi nila na sa Amerika is puro bills. Kasi puro utang rin naman yung mga tao rito. So, always manage your credit score properly. Huwag kayong dumating sa punto, guys, na lunod na kayo sa utang. So, ang gawin ninyo, bayaran, um, ang gawin ninyo, yung kunyad ng utang kayo ng laptop, isang utang lang muna. Bayaran nyo muna yon and then you can proceed to another utang. Tapos, utang naman kayo na sasakyan, bayaran nyo muna. And then, you can proceed to another utang. So, ganun guys yung pag-aalaga ng credit score. Ang credit score dito guys, is kayamanan. As in super, yan ang aming kayamanan dito. We may not have 
cash in our hand we may not have savings in our bank but if you have a fantastic credit score you have everything in the world <laughs> you know you got everything so those are the those are the three things that you have to remember guys when you come here in the united states number one is study learn and speak english you don't have to be good guys just basic it's fine number two is you need to learn how to drive and number three is you need to build up your credit score and number four guys is just an added bonus so number four guys is a job so yun nga guys since, since me i got here in the united states as a fiance visa it is not really a requirement for me to get a job because i got here to get married to start a family but it is a good thing if you have a job um kasi uh, mag mamahal lang bukod sa mahal lang bilihin dito may mga advantage ang merong tayong trabaho this is the advantage of having a job here in the united states guys first of all may mga benefits sila like 401k 401k is like a retirement plan na dinidedak sa sweldo mo and tinatapatan siya ng empleyado mo so for example for the for the past year you you made a thousand dollars contribution in my case, sa trabaho ko, tinatapatan nila yun. So, they will add $1,000 again also for as a contribution. So, nagiging $2,000 yung 401k mo. So, nangyayari siya every year. That is one of the benefits of my job. Second is, you have a benefits also for health insurance. So, of course, if you are working, you will have your own health insurance. Or in my case, we will have, I will have my husband as a beneficiary for for health insurance. Maganda siyang opportunity kasi mahirap dito guys if you go to a hospital just a simple check up. Sobrang mahal na uh, medical dito. When you go to, when you get to the emergency room and you don't have insurance, so mag pay out of the pocket ka, mabigat sa bulsa. So it, it, it is really a necessity na meron kang health insurance dito sa, Pilip sa America. Number three is meron ka syempre, um, Paid time off, you know, if you're working, mag, pag, magandang, pag magandang kumpanya guys ang napasukan mo, you will have these benefits na paid time off or PTO. I mean, you get to file a leave with pay. So, kapag medyo na-stress, na burn out ka na sa trabaho mo, mag-file mag ka ng one-week leave and, you know, nakapagpahinga ka pa, nakapagpahinga ka na, may rest ka pa. So, those are the benefits of having a job rather than staying at home. But of course, guys, it's always your, I know, your prerogative. You know, it's really hard, especially for Filipinas or for for women, because we are the adjust. We are the sacrifice. We sacrifice our career. Limitan, we are the ones resign to give way for our family. So it's it's really depends on your prerogative. If you can balance, if you can balance your family and your and your career, it's better, de ba? But if you can't, if you're not the kind of person who can do multitasking, then, you know, you can always choose your priority. And family is always a priority. But yun lang, bonus na kung meron kang trabaho and you're working for a good company or that offers those benefits. Because guys, 401k is a very good help for every one of us. Para pagdating ng panahon, hindi ka na makapagtrabaho or anytime na meron tayong... Um, emergency for O1K you can always withdraw it from your account ayun guys so those are the stuff that you need to know before you come here in the United States and you need to do if you come here in the United States when you have those guys kahit iwanan ka ng asawa mo kahit um, ipagpalayasin ka ng jowa mo kahit na mag-divorce kayo ng asawa mo if you have these three important things in the United States guys you can live here in the United States without depending on anybody else. So, it's very important to know those three things. And that's coming from a fellow Filipina, fellow immigrant in the United States. Okay, yun lang guys ang aking video for today. And I hope it was a helpful video, especially for the immigrants. And I hope you like this video guys. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And do please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and uh, please click that not notification bell um, so that you will be updated whenever I upload videos in the future that's all for today have a great day everyone bye bye